So Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers lost in the NFC Championship game 31-26 to to Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And look, to me, the better team won the game, in my opinion. I did actually, you know, go out on the limb and I said Green Bay might win this game. You know, when I was, you know, going through and predicting these games, I thought that Aaron Rodgers, you know, at home, the Packers were a red-hot team heading into the playoffs. Uh, they were playing some good football. I thought that they had a chance to win the game, but obviously um, they did not. Well, they had a chance, but they lost, they obviously lost, like I said. Um, it doesn't help Aaron Rodgers, you know, due to the fact that in the first half of that game, the Packers' defense did not show up, did not show up at all. Green Bay's offensive line really struggled to block Tampa Bay up front. Aaron Rodgers was constantly pressured. He was sacked five times in the game, and Green Bay never led at any point in that football game. And it was just one of those things where you could clearly tell that Tampa Bay was the more talented team, and Matt Lafleur decided to kick a field goal. Instead of going for it on fourth down in the red zone, you know, with the, with a chance to tie up that ball game late in the fourth quarter, that is a fireable offense. It is. Okay. Now, does that mean Matt LaFleur deserves to be fired? No. Matt LaFleur has proven up to this point to at least be a pretty good head coach. You know, he's won a lot of games. So I'm not going to crucify him, but that was a very, very dumb decision because at that point, you're pretty much saying if Tom Brady gets a first down, the game is over. So, I would have much rather have trusted a three-time MVP Hall of Fame quarterback in Aaron Rodgers in that situation rather than going for a field goal and then relying on my defense to get me the ball back because I, I pretty much knew at that point the chances of Green Bay getting that football back were pretty much slim to none. And obviously the officials weren't great in that match, weren't great on both sides, you know, for Green Bay. That didn't help. But the bottom line is Aaron Rodgers' legacy to me took a hit in the playoffs versus Tom Brady. I feel a tad bit different about Aaron Rodgers today rather than how I felt about him about a week or two ago. You know, Aaron Rodgers, we still can recognize that he is arguably the most talented quarterback of all time. He's still great. He's won a Super Bowl. He's going to be a three-time NFL MVP in, in the ne- in the next couple of days. He will win his third MVP. He, he deserves to win a third NFL MVP. He was unbelievable this past year. And... This just goes to show you how great Aaron Rodgers is. We're critiquing and, you know, saying Aaron Rodgers didn't get it done when Aaron Rodgers threw for 350 yards and three touchdowns versus a pretty good Buccaneers defense. He made really good throws, and he was a big reason why Green Bay was in that game for the most part. However, at the same time, we have to look at Aaron Rodgers and say he's got the same amount of Super Bowl victories as Nick Foles. Has the same amount of Super Bowl victories as Joe Flacco, as Trent Dilfer, Ben Rosberger, and Eli Manning have won more Super Bowls than Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers has had one great playoff run in his career up to this point, and we can say Aaron Rodgers might be the most talented quarterback of all time, but if you only got one Super Bowl on your resume, isn't that kind of a weird thing to think? I mean... Now, he's not Dan Marino, where Dan Marino was super talented and never won a Super Bowl, but for years and years, the knock on Green Bay was Aaron Rodgers didn't have enough support, and the Green Bay Packers had seven Pro Bowl players this year. Seven players on their team are going to the Pro Bowl this year. He's got a solid running game. He's got a really good offensive line. He's got a star wide receiver in Devontae Adams, and the defense is opportunistic, okay? And... That defense gave Aaron Rodgers three interceptions in the second half of that game. They intercepted Tom Brady three times in the second half. And Aaron Rodgers, unfortunately, he did not take advantage of the opportunities that he was given in the second half of that game. And it sucks because Aaron Rodgers actually played a pretty good game, but it wasn't good enough, you know. And this was the first time in NFL, well, not NFL history, but this is the first time in Aaron Rodgers' career he had an NFC Championship game at home, and he blew it. People said, oh, he had to go on the road to face San Francisco. Oh, he had to go on the road to face Atlanta. Oh, he had to go on the road to face, um, what was the other team? Um, Seattle. Yeah, he had to go on the road to face these teams. Well, Aaron, you got the NFC title game at home. You had a good team. Vegas actually favored you in the game, and he came up short, and that's unfortunate. Um, you know, I'm really big on the eye test as far as when I evaluate quarterbacks. Um, you know, 
when I look at Aaron Rodgers and I look at the way he throws the football, his arm strength, his accuracy, the way he moves in, inside and outside the pocket, I think to myself, that's the most talented thrower of the football I've ever seen, even better than Patrick Mahomes, because Patrick Mahomes, we've always seen him, you know, dominate for a little stretch of time, okay, we'll see what he does for a decade, you know, but if we keep labeling Aaron Rodgers as the most talented thrower of the football ever, and he only finishes his career with one Super Bowl, any way you slice it, that is a disappointment, okay, if Aaron Rodgers cannot win a second Super Bowl, I will deem that to be him underachieving in his career. That doesn't mean that he's not an all-time great. That doesn't mean that he's not arguably maybe a top-five quarterback of all time because I still believe he is a top-five quarterback of all time. But at some point, Aaron Rodgers is going to have to overcome his defense. At some point, Aaron Rodgers is going to have to overcome, you know, bad coaching in the playoffs in certain moments. In the playoffs, it's all about overcoming things. And Aaron Rodgers, he had one great playoff run to a Super Bowl where he beat the Pittsburgh Steelers, but ultimately... He's below 500 in the playoffs ever since, and it just seemed like this might be the year where Aaron Rodgers broke through and made it his year. The LA Rams were being held back by Jared Goff all year. Drew Brees is not the same quarterback. He clearly needs to retire. Seattle has a bad offensive line, and Tom Brady, while on a talented team, this is his first year in Tampa Bay. Aaron, it's your year to take the crown in the NFC. Or at least get to a Super Bowl. And sadly, Aaron Rodgers came up short when it mattered most. We could, you know, blame the defense. We could blame the offensive line, the coaching staff. And listen, I understand that. Let me just say this. I've been one of the people that have been super duper critical of the way the Green Bay Packers operate and do business. But ultimately, Aaron Rodgers had a chance versus the greatest quarterback of all time in his house to prove I'm just as good as that guy. I deserve to be on the level of that guy. And while Tom Brady did not put together the greatest game in the world in the highest leverage moments when it mattered most, Tom Brady got it done. And Aaron Rodgers, unfortunately, he, he played good, but not good enough to win the game. So I believe Aaron Rodgers' legacy did take a hit just simply because I don't know if he's ever gonna win a, ever gonna win another Super Bowl in Green Bay because this was a, this was arguably a missed opportunity, you know. But we'll see, you know, down the road what Aaron Rodgers can do. But ultimately, I think Aaron Rodgers' legacy took a little bit of a hit versus Tom Brady in the playoffs. He's still great, but we can acknowledge what I just said as well. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Please also note that the Juice Alert Sports Podcast is not just a YouTube channel. It is available on all podcasting platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content with all your friends. This podcast is is my favorite thing in the entire world right now. It is my passion. I want more people to listen to this podcast. I really want this podcast to grow. Also, a fun fact about me is that I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. I am looking to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. And I potentially would like to start my own network if this podcast really truly grows or if I fall short of that goal, I would love to work for a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. I am open to all networks. So if you believe in my dreams and you see or hear my passion through the screen, be sure to tell all your friends about the Juice Alert Sports Podcast. Stay motivated, you guys. Have a God-blessed day, and I'm out.